<clears throat> all right, Shalom. First and foremost, want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'asham Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham Rechai Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles, a great millstone that rule well. Peace, love, and respect as always to you, elect, doc, out there laboring in this ministry, in sincerity and in truth, and presenting your bodies as a living sacrifice to do so. Hasten on unto the second coming of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, Mashiach, our Lord and Savior, whom this world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, whom is going to be sent back to fulfill the will of, of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, whom this world ignorantly calls God. So by uh, you see the title, Who Has the Vision? Uh, or what is the vision and who has it? Okay. What is the vision and who has it? All right. And when you get into this word vision, you know, which I want to touch on a couple of these definitions, you know, ultimately that vision is having the wisdom, knowledge, understanding of these prophecies, of these scriptures. All right. Because you have, as the scriptures tell us, you know, you have uh, Jake, the see and they perceive not hear and understand not and that's because in order to understand the visions or the mysteries or the parables or the prophecies of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai he has to put his spirit on you alright you don't just wake up in the morning and understand all these things Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai's spirit has to be dealing with you alright so Lord willing this is an edifying video I'm gonna, like I said I want to get into a couple of these definitions uh, I have a, a few precepts lined up we're, we're going to go through the spirit man all right, so uh, first and foremost, I'm going to start with Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 1. All right, it says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And standing upon that watch is what what the men of the Lord are doing. All right, we're watching these, watching for these different prophecies. You know, we're watching the news, you know, to see, uh, um, you know, because the, the scriptures tell us in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, that when the fig tree, uh, fig tree, uh, put it forth its leaves, then you know that summer is nigh. You know, so the Most High has given us signs to know that we're getting closer and closer to the end. Okay, so that's why we're standing upon our watch, the watchtower, and we're proclaiming this word. We're blowing the trumpet unto the nation of Israel. All right, and only the, only the elect are going to understand the vision. All right. It says, and the Lord Yahweh answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. You know, because here you have you have the people in this world, the, the way of this world. These people don't understand the vision. You know, at a point in time when we heard these words, we, we just we didn't truly 100 percent understand these things. You know, we had to have someone guide us in the right direction. Ultimately. We had to have the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Al Shai that was going to deal with this because the Most High, as He told Jeremiah, you know, He had formed thee from the belly, He had chosen thee to be a prophet to the nations. You know, so those that, that the Most High put the spirit on, these are the people that the Most High have foreordained or predestinated. Okay? This is why you, you have people, a lot of people that do not understand these visions. You know, they don't understand certain passages. And the scriptures, because the spirit's not on them, they're thinking carnal. Okay, and this thing, this thing of ours, is is, is a very serious and spiritual thing, man. All right, so it says, make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. You know, we have to have prophets or some type of teacher to break down certain things, certain prophecies, and certain uh, passages in the scriptures for us, so we may get the understanding thereof. As it says in Proverbs chapter four and verse seven, with all thy getting, get understanding. Right. So it says for the vision is yet for an appointed time. You know, the most high had had these prophecies set up uh, strategically from the beginning of time. You know, these things were already set up from the beginning of time. This is no new thing. You know, Jacob and Esau uh, or Jacob taking down Esau through the through the, uh, the, the, the power. Yahweh Bashim Al Shai. This is no new thing. The nation of Israel. Being the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans today, and the only chosen people of the Heavenly Father, this is no new thing. All right, the destruction of the, this this wicked kingdom, this is no new thing. All right, so on and so forth. You go through the scriptures; all these things were written a four time. You know, Romans fifteen and verse four tells us that. Um, what is uh Second Ezra, the ninth chapter tells us that, because he said what. 
I'll grab that real fast. The second Ezra's. I uh, like it wrong that. This is a uh, second Ezra's, which I'm already there. I'll just no. I'm gonna get straight to it. Uh, second Ezra's chapter nine. I'm gonna get straight to that point. All right. It says um, second Ezra's nine, and you know it, it, this is it, that's why it says measure the time diligently within itself. You know, because it says, I'll, I'll just, I'll just kind of breeze through it. You know, because you can't. It's hard to jump into this chapter without getting all the meat off the bone. This is Second Ezra nine and one. It says he met, he answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself, and when thou seest part of the signs pass which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world. Then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. You know, and that's the point. All right, so the Most High, none of these prophecies that the Most High have are new. These are things that are predestined, man. You know, um, as it says here in Isaiah, before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Okay, that's talking about what? Prophecy. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 42 and verse 9. It says, Behold, the former things are come to pass. And what, what are, what's coming to pass? Prophecy. All right? And new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. All right? Which, you know, part of the definition in the word vision that I have, you know, um, jumping down to the end, it says, Statesmen like foresight. All right? Really, just focus in and key in on the foresight, all right? Something that you see before, and this is what Yahweh Bashimah Shai have set on the prophets, all right? As it says in the book of Revelation, you know, he have um, dived us with that eye solve. We we're able to see things now, all right? These things, these prophecies are made plain unto the elect or the hopeful elect, okay? Uh, so let me let me finish this in Habakkuk 2 And then I'll, I'll jump straight into that in, in Revelation Let's have a Habakkuk 2 and 3 It says for the vision is yet for an appointed time Alright the Most High had this set at a, a specific time Only he knows the day Alright But at the end it shall speak and not lie And this is how we know that we're closer and closer To the end of this age Alright Because we see the prophecies are coming to pass We see the RFID chip Coming to becoming more and more of a um, a relevancy, all right. It's becoming um, getting closer and closer to being mandatory, which this is the plans of the elite, which is written in the scriptures. You know, when it, concerning their NWO, all right, their 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 um their plan is to microchip the whole world, which is that that market to be spoken of in Revelation thirteen, okay. That's prophecy. And, and it's speaking, man. It's speaking louder than ever. It says, though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. And that's talking about the salvation of the, the nation of Israel and the destruction of this, this wicked kingdom. All right? It's on the way. But things, are, some prophecies have to come to pass before that happens. As it says in Matthew, the 24th chapter. All right? This is Matthew, chapter 24. And I believe, um, so like I put this, Jeremiah. Matthew chapter 24 and yep I'm gonna start from verse I'll read, I'll read verse 13 all right it says be he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all the nations and then shall the end come all right that well that that's not really what I want to get but that's that's major too because that's part of prophecy with that 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 represents the elect being sealed all right it says all it says this word must be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations because not only do the nation of israel have to know their trans be made known of their transgressions and their uh, um their wickedness but these other nations have to know their their future have to know their destiny which is ultimately slavery man servitude Serving, uh, serving the nation of Israel, man. Okay. So, um, no, it's it's not there. It's not here. Um, here we go. Here we go. This is uh, Matthew twenty-four, 
and verse verse six it says and you shall hear wars and rumors of wars see that you be not troubled for all these things must come to pass you know all these all these different prophecies that the lord have said have to come to pass but the end is not yet why because the uh, a lot of prophecies haven't came to pass yet okay you have sedition among men on a, on a uh, small scale you have you've had uh we've had pockets of insurrection on a small scale but when these things truly come to pass all right when these when these different nations d decide that they're they're fully sick of that 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 well favored harlot being babylon okay they're going to rise up as it says in the book of jeremiah the 50th and the 51st uh, uh chapter and they're all going to rise up and they're going to what shoot their arrows being those thermonuclear missiles those intercontinental ballistic missiles missiles okay all right so now i want to get into the revelation all right and then i want to touch on some of these words matter of fact i'm going to get i'm going to this word vision all right all right so this is the etym etymology online for the word vision it says circa 1300 something seen in the imagination or in the supernatural from anglo-french vision old french vision present presence sight view look appearance dream supernatural sight act of seeing sight things seen and and everybody can't see you know uh, uh these prophecies coming to pass they can't see them spiritually okay just to clear that up because the book of uh, i believe isaiah the 42nd chapter you know it tells us that um matter of fact seeing and they, they see and perceive not okay uh let's see this is isaiah um this is not the one, it's not the one i was looking for but i want to get into this anyway you know it's, it's a, still a good precept all right um this is isaiah 6 and 9 it says and he said go and tell this people hear ye indeed but understand not see ye indeed but perceive not all right make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. You know, and, and Jake's not perceiving the things that are going on. You know, here it is. We're coming out with these prophecies through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shai, and all they can do is talk about how um, how we're dressed, or they 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 talk about the um, the the uh, the rape doctrine, which they don't truly understand the rape doctrine, and many other things. That uh, starting with the elders and apostles here, great millstone bring down. I mean, bring, uh, uh, bring out. All right. And this is because they're not chosen. No, this is Isaiah twenty nine and verse nine. It says, "Stay yourselves and wander. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. You know that. What, what is that wine and that strong drink? That's these different philosophies." These different doctrines that they believe in, they got they got their minds all twisted up, man. You know, got them believing that our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai and uh, our uh, the Heavenly Father Yahweh, they they believe that these are are are, are men, are white men, so called white men. Okay, they believe that everybody can everybody uh, um, can be saved. You're supposed to love everyone. All right. You're supposed to uh, show servitude to these these wicked ass women, you know. They they believe in all these things, man. All right, this is the spirit of Babylon that's on them. All right, going into Isaiah the thirtieth chapter, they cover with the covering, but not of my spirit that they may add sin to sin. All right, this is this is that that uh that drunkenness that the nation of Israel is in, man. All right, because the, the um when the word wine, um you know because wine um is is correlated with this knowledge okay so if you put it in a spiritual sense if you if you read the read with context it says they're drunken but not with wine they stagger but not with strong drink well what is that talking about you know they're, they're drunk with the wine of these different philosophies and these different uh um ways of life here in babylon man it says for the lord yahweh hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and hath closed your eyes all right, he have closed your eyes. But wait, it said in Isaiah 6 that they, they have eyes to see and perceive not. So, you know, hey, just putting it together, 
I mean, the Lord ain't put the spirit on them to see these things, man. He didn't give them the foresight. All right. Was it made available to them? Is this word made available to them? Of course. But do they utilize it? And of course not. And it's obvious by their actions, by their works. All right. It says in the vision, Salakia, it says the prophets and your rulers, the seers have he covered. You know, because you got you got these dudes in the churches. You got these false prophets that are out here uh, putting out wayward doctrines, you know, old wives fables. All right. And they, they are not truly. Ultimately, they're not feeding the flock how the flock is supposed to be fed. They're not giving them the whole role. All right. They're not feeding them the whole role. Here, and, that, and that's why we receive over here Great Millstone We receive so much slander and ridicule and hatred Is because we teach this word uh, directly and correctly You know and it cuts a lot of people to the heart As it says in uh, uh, Hebrews the 4th uh, chapter in the 12th verse This is why a lot of people can't understand it man Because the, the spirit of Yahweh Shemashah is not on them But reading on It says in the vision of all has become And the vision of all has become Unto you as the words of a book that is sealed Which men deliver to one that is learned Saying read this I pray thee And he said I cannot for it is sealed Because the Most High put the spirit on these false prophets man To understand these words But hey but guess what Amos 3 and 7 Right Let's get it This is Amos chapter 3 and verse 7 It says surely the Lord power Will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. You know, and his servants, the prophets, are the men that he have chosen, the men that he have called to walk worthy of this vocation wherewith they were called. All right, these are men that were called to, to the edification and the feeding of the flock of the nation of Israel, not the ones in the churches that that, that send the collection plate through the, through the congregation at least four or five or maybe six times. You know, through, through, the, through the service, through the entire service. All right. But the men of the Lord, the true men of the Lord, we don't want, we don't need anything. All right. We don't want anything from the congregation, man. Except for them to, to, uh, to, to repent of their, their transgressions and, and to, uh, to, to follow the lamb, man, being Yahweh Shai. Okay. But the, this is how you know who are the men of the Lord and who ain't. Because the, the men of the Lord are going to bring forth these prophecies. All right. So I want to. Um, so it says back in this back in this definition of vision in the Etym online, it says act of seeing sight thing seen. OK, to see the sense of sight. And Jake don't have a sense of sight, man. Matter of fact, I want to get that. Um, now I want to get into this. Um, not being mixed with faith. There's a couple of scriptures that are coming to my mind. I'm just going to get straight into them. All right. So like you yeah, mix with faith. So this is Hebrews chapter four, and I'm gonna start from one. All right, it says, "Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into His rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. All right, and who is that us? The hopeful elect, the men that the Lord have chosen, and that them are those who are gonna um." Those who, who don't understand the words that are that are teached, that are taught. Alright? But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed in faith, uh, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. We have faith in these prophecies. You know? We have faith, we have faith in the words of Yahweh Shema Shai because it says what? It says he's not a man that he should lie. It says, I am the Lord, I change not. It says the Lord is a, uh, not a man of, of variableness, meaning he's not subject to change. All right. And all the things that he's done, we've seen it come to pass. You know, uh, also, not, not all the things. It's lucky, and let me correct that. Not all the things that he's done, we've seen come to pass. But the things that he's shown us have come to pass. All right. Perfect example. When he, he took the nation of Israel, out of the land of Egypt, you know. He, he did that, that he did that, um, he did mighty works to prove his strength and to prove his power and to show, look, I'm here. All right. That he hardened the heart of Pharaoh. And look, and, and, and that's the same thing today, man. The most high is hardening the heart of these different, um, these, di these different tyrants and so on and carrying on. So I can, what the hell is that? 
you know, he's, he's doing this, uh, that we may have faith. And you have a lot of people that see the same things that we see, but they don't have faith, man. All right. Second Ezra 15 and verse two, it says the words of the most high are faithful and true. Okay. This is why we believe in the prophecies. This is why the most high is only dealing with a select, um, uh, election, election of men Matter of fact I'll get that And then I'll get uh, the revelation In the book of Romans uh, Chapter uh, 9 and verse 7 or I believe it's 11 and 7 Yeah it's 11 and 7 Salakia. So this is Romans chapter 11 And verse 7 it says What then Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for But the election have obtained it And the rest were blinded all right. And that's talking about what the wisdom, knowledge and understanding of the things that are written in this book. All right. Starting with the laws and going into the prophecies as well. All right. Taking into account these different um, these different passages that we have, you know, of our forefathers, the things that they did um, in, the, in, in the sight of Yahweh Bashim Shai, things that they did to prove their um, prove their worth to Yahweh Bashim Shai. You know, we believe in these things, man, vehemently, you know, regardless of what this world may think, you know, this, this is an unpopular, um, <laughs> some, some of the breakdowns of these scriptures are very unpopular amongst society, which is, which is, hey, we're expecting that. We, we expect that, man, because the Lord ain't dealing with every single person, man. All right. But I'm gonna get this in the book of Revelation. I believe in the third chapter. Um, yep. This is the book of Revelation chapter three. In verse 18, it says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold in the fire. <clears throat> that, excuse me. It says that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. That's talking. Who is that talking about, man? The gold tried in the fire. All right. The white raiment, the gold, the gold tried in the fire is talking about the elect. All right. Those who, who have been through the trenches, those who have proved their worth to Yahweh by Shema Shai. It says, and the white raiment represents what? Purity, man. You know, because did not the scripture say, uh, um, uh, roughly paraphrasing, you want you want to be found uh, blameless, all right, without spot. You know, it, it, that that's what a man who who sincerely repents, or repented for the things that he's done, you know, of the transgressions that he's done, okay. And he's been on a straight and narrow ever since. You know, these are the ones that are uh, um, dressed in white raiment, as it says in um, the book of uh, uh, Second Ezra, when you know Yahweh Shai was putting um, uh, uh, crowns on the head of, uh, of those dressed in white raiment, man. All right, but reading on, it says that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not doeth not appear, and anoint thine eyes for I saw, I saw that thou mayest see. All right, so let's get that I saw. All right. So when this word I solve, we're gonna get it here. Strong's G twenty eight fifty four, Kalurian, Kalurian, Thayer's right, lexicon related entry, composed of various Kalurian. materials, Kalurian. And used as a remedy for tender eyelids. Because the things that, the things that we've read, and, and we came to understand. Hey, hey, this is why it says uh, he that increases knowledge increases bitterness because the most high have opened your, 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 your mind up to understand what you're reading. You know, this, that's that I saw, man. A lot of Jake, they don't get butt hurt when they read um, uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 68. All right, where it says that we should go into Egypt, begin with ships and no man shall, uh, no man shall buy you. OK, that doesn't bother them, man, because they don't understand it. But, you know, you have the men of the Lord, you know, who, who, who had to understand it. And this is that vision. All right. The vision is understanding these things, understanding the, uh, the parables, understanding the prophecies, man. And Jake don't understand. Two thirds of our people do not understand. All right. So there's another precept I wanted to get. Um, let's see what I have here. Uh, yep. Proverbs uh, 28. Uh, 29 and verse 10 okay this is proverbs 29 and um looks like it was it 28 and verse 10 so let me see 
uh, tw uh, 29 and 18. So lock in. This is also this Proverbs 29 and verse um, verse 18. Okay. It says where, where there is no vision, the people perish. And what is that vision? As I may mention, the understanding of the laws and the things that are written in the scriptures. All right. The prophecies, understanding why these things are so. It says where no where there is no vision, the people perish, man. And this is why this is this is why it's our job to hit the highways and the hedges, to put up these these um electronic epistles. So we that vision may be known, made known. Okay. Because hey, our our people are in need uh, uh, of these of these words, man. They're, they're spiritually and morally perishing because they don't have the the true prophets, you know, being being these fault these these niggas coming out with these these wayward, corny ass doctrines that don't edify, you know, and, and people are just they're, they're slowly dwindling away spiritually, man. All right, but when that's that's why when the men of the Lord are set up, you have uh, the elect that are going to flock to it, man. You know that that's going to bring them life. All right, so it says where there is no vision, where, where where there's nobody speaking the truth. Where there's nobody uh, 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 going to bat, uh, closing up the gaps, all right? The people perish, but he that keepeth the law happy is he, all right? Hey, that, that's plain and simple, man. But he that keepeth the law happy is he. This is Second uh, Second Peter, one and nineteen, all right? Second Peter chapter one, and verse nineteen. And this this is how you know who the true men of the Lord are, man. It says, uh, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. And the, the word prophecy mean, means what? To say before. Pro meaning before, facai meaning to speak, to speak before. As, as we read in the book of Isaiah, uh, um, it, it says that uh, these things, before these things spring forth, I tell you of them, that's prophecy, man. Okay? Was that 2nd Ezra 9 that I just read? These, uh, these things that I told you before. Okay, these this is prophecy. All right, and we have a more sure word of prophecy. Why? Because we understand the things that we're being that are that we're reading. We understand the things that we're reading because the Most High put the Spirit upon us, man. Okay, and these things are also coming to pass. What did then? Uh, was that Deuteronomy eighteen and eighteen, where it says that if a prophet speaks something and it doesn't come to pass, then you know that the Lord ain't sent his ass, man. But we know that the Lord have have sent. You no, know, starting with the elders and apostles at Great Millstone, because guess what? They they they've been speaking these things, and these things are coming to pass. And is it this work of them? No, it's of the heavenly Father. All right, this is how we. This is why we we uh, follow the elders and apostles at Great Millstone because they have a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto, ye do well that ye take heed. Uh, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place And we're in that dark place in Babylon man Gross darkness Okay As it says in the book of Job It says that we're in the land uh, of darkness Where there is no order Alright And this light is shining man This light is shining We're able to see That's <laughs> that's that I saw You know Reading on It says Unto the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts And that day star is who? Yahweh Shai man Okay Knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation, and that's a, that's another uh, door closer for Jake. You know, and they, <laughs> you know, if if, if if it don't make sense to them, they say, "Oh, nah, you came up with that," or this show, everybody has their own interpretation. And it, what I, those that say that this because they err not knowing the scriptures. You know, that's simply what that means, because there is no private interpretation of the, of, of the prophecies of Yahweh Bashem Al Shai, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. But holy men of the Most High spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, man. You know, these are the men that the Lord had chose. You know, that they, they, they were uh, chose at that time to write these certain passages down. You know, to, to proclaim these prophecies. You know, Dan, uh, uh, Daniel, when he, went, when he went to the um the vision of the statue, okay? Isaiah, when he uh, uh, went into the vision uh, uh, of the, um you know, the laws being established in the kingdom of heaven. You know? So on and so forth, man. And you going through these the different books of prophets, you know, you will see this is the vision of of this the prophet Ezekiel, or this is the vision of the prophet Isaiah that the Lord have gave unto him. 
You know, hey, this this is how we understand that these these prophecies of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai are what they are because he have he's been doing he been the same thing that he's doing to us by by uh, making these things plain upon tables. You no, know, uh, um, well, he didn't make it plain upon tables to the, the 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 former prophets. That's why we understand it now. All right, because it says it says that in, uh, I believe the book of uh, Colossians. That, uh, that this thing had been hid for so long, but it's now revealed unto us the ser uh, the servants, the prophets. Okay. But long story short, the Most High put the Spirit on them to be able to proclaim these visions, and we're able to break them down now in this day and age. Okay. This is Deuteronomy, or not Salakia, Numbers, the Book of Numbers, chapter twelve and verse six, and I'm gonna probably close it out after this. All right, this is uh, the book of Numbers, chapter 12 and verse 6. And he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord Yahweh, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. All right, the most High, he's going to come to him in a vision and speak to him unto him in a dream. Meaning what? He's going to put his words and his, his, uh, um, uh, uh, his will inside of whom he will. Okay, to be able to proclaim certain things. To be able to claim certain prophecies that was going to come to pass. All right. So who has that vision? The, net, the men of the Lord have that vision. Matter of fact, since I quoted it, I'm going to close it out on that scripture. The servants, the prophets. All right. And, and, and from generation to generation, the prophets have been um, have been shut out because it says it says I've sent my prophets unto you be times. OK, I've sent my prophets to you be times, uh, which means to rise and rise up early. But you pretty much uh, um, didn't take take heed. OK, uh, let's see. Um, revealed unto them my, by my service to prophets. So like, yeah. uh, re, uh, revealed. So like, yeah. All right. So this is the book of Ephesians. All right, so like I said, Colossians is the book of Ephesians. All right, um, I'm gonna start from verse one. It says uh, Ephesians three and one. It says, "For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Yahweh Shai Mashiach, for you Gentiles, which the Gentiles were the Israelite foreigners, those that didn't know that they were of the nation of Israel, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of the Most High, which is given given me to you, were how that by revelation." He made known unto me the mystery. This is the same thing that's going on today in this day and age, man. The Most High is making the revelation, um, by, by revelation, making the mysteries known unto us, man. The things that are not seen by every uh, Joe Smo walking around. Things that are not understood by your pastors, that are not understood by your grandparents, all right? Or by these proud, these proud ass, uh, these proud ass Edomites, man. These things are not made known unto them. It's made known unto the, hope, the the elect, man. Plain and simple. As I wrote a four and few words, whereby when you read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Hamashiach. And that's that's what a man of the Lord is supposed to do. All right? That's called edification. That's called feeding the flock. All right? That's called caring for the sheep. When you read, you may understand. That's why you have to have a guide, man. Someone to, to show you, uh, um, to to show and prove to you that these scriptures that are that are written are real and they're coming to pass, or that you may just have the understanding thereof. All right, it says which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. You know, as I may mention of these different prophets that you uh, that we have as uh, as Ezra's when he seen the right aiming thunderbolt, he didn't understand what that mean. You understand what that meant at that time. But in this day and age, we understand, you know, uh, in which we understand that those are the thermonuclear missiles. You know, when it says they can shoot from uh, when the arrow could shoot from one end of the world to another. We understood what that meant, you know, by the way of the most high revealing it. When you have these different nations that are testing missiles to shoot them to the other side of the world, man, put it together. OK, they're not doing this for no reason. They're doing this because the most high have already had this set up from the beginning. All right. It says, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto us 
uh, unto Asalaki, unto unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. You know, as I mentioned earlier, this is a spiritual thing. We don't pull these prophecies, the breakdowns of these prophecies out of our ass, man. We're not winging it. You know, these things are revealed unto the, the, the holy apostles and the prophets by the Spirit. All right. So with that being said, Lord willing, this was the edifying video. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakhakadash. And until the next time, I'll say Shalom.